Okay. So, uh, students, students working with the unit circle. Um, I put some videos up about the unit circle and uh, some of the coordinates of particular uh, terminal sides of particular angles like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Uh, again, I think of those as the cardinal marks, like the cardinal marks on a compass. But we're still fighting with this a little bit. And I, I'm going to provide this, hopefully, for to create some clarification or additional clarification. Um, if I had some angle that, for instance, has a standard, it's in standard position, meaning its initial side is here, and that its terminal side is 60 degrees. That means this angle is 60 degrees, and this angle is 90, and this angle is 30 degrees. Um, it is particularly useful, as we've seen with other right triangle trigonometry, to know the lengths of all three sides of the right triangle. And if I can have, I, if I know all three sides, the lengths of all three sides, then I can easily tell you the ratios of the different trigonometric functions or trigonometric ratios, uh, like sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant of this angle, the reference angle. Okay, so that's part of my goal is to provide clarification there. Some folks are again are struggling with this unit circle and trying to locate things. And really, the unit circle is a tool that allows us to quickly put information down without having to go to our calculator. Um, so where does this, what does this tell us if this is a 60 degree angle? We know that, well, we should know, but if we don't, that's okay, that the coordinates of this point out here on the unit circle are 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. That only happens because the radius is 1. But where does this come from? Uh, and we'll show you two different. So here we go. Uh, if I have a right triangle, let's give you the easier of the two first. A right triangle, and let's say that it's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. We call back the geometry, that means this is an isosceles triangle, meaning these two sides are congruent. So if I told you that the side here was 7, and this was 7, and asked you to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, I'm hopefully, I'm, I'm confident that you would be able to tell me such using the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared, length of the legs, lengths of the, square the lengths of the legs, sum of the square of the lengths of the legs is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. So we're going to put seven squared plus seven squared equals hypotenuse squared. 49 plus 49 equals hypotenuse squared. Uh, this is gonna be 98 equals hypotenuse squared. And of course, since I'm looking for the length of the hypotenuse, take the square root of both sides, and we would get the square root of 98. But in an attempt to simplify this, can't I do this? And then because this number is the square root of 49, it's really 7. And the square root of 2 is still there because it couldn't be simplified, and I get this. Square root of, or excuse me, 7 times the square root of 2. Now, keeping that in mind, let's look at another right triangle. Oops, that's poorly drawn. Not that that's significantly better, but there we go. Another 45, 45, 90 triangle. But in this case, I tell you that this is 3, this is 3, and I want to calculate the hypotenuse. Again, like squared plus like squared equals hypotenuse squared. 3 squared plus 3 squared equals hypotenuse squared. 9 plus 9 equals hypotenuse squared. 18 equals hypotenuse squared. Square root of both sides. I get 2 times the square root of 9. Excuse me, that's not correct. I'm going too fast. The square root of 2 times 9, which is 3 times the square root of 2. And I get this. Do you see any sort of pattern? The relationship between this number and that one that looks very similar to the relationship of this number to that one. And I'm hoping that you're going to tell me 
that I will never have to do any of this work again or this work again because I'm going to recognize that when I have a 4590 4590 triangle, why would I put 44 there? That if you tell me the length of this, 752, that I know the length of this, and that I know the length of the hypotenuse is going to be that number times the square root of 2. Or, more generally expressed, this is A, this is A, this will have to be A times the square root of 2, irrespective of the value of A. All right? That being a right angle, of course. So, that's one triangle. Let's go back here. And let's drop that in here. I'm going to draw it in this orientation. Let's look at this one now. This one is going to be the 60 and 30 degree triangle. This one is more, it's just a little bit more time consuming to do the Pythagorean theorem because I'm trying to prove to you that these two lengths, this one and this one, the hypotenuse and the longer length have the um, relationship, or that they have a relationship with this short length of the shorter length. At least that's how I look at it. If I tell you that this is the length of, I don't know, 15. The length of the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, not every right triangle, but a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, the length of the hypotenuse will always be twice that of the shorter leg. So the length of this is 30. And please keep in mind, this is the shorter leg. How do we know that that is the shorter leg? It is opposite the, le the angle that has the least measure. It is opposite the angle that has the least measure. That's a geometric idea from freshman, sophomore geometry. Okay? The hypotenuse is the longest because it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. Think of that. So, this idea that um, the hypotenuse will always be twice the length of the shorter legs or the leg opposite the 30 degree angle. In addition to that, we will know that this other leg, which is opposite the 60 degree angle, has a measure that is the length of the shorter leg times the square root of 3. And we could do Pythagorean theorem over and over and over again and prove it out. The generalization of that, like we did with the isosceles triangle, is that if this was the length of B, this hypotenuse had to be the length of 2 times that value, and this would be the value of the shorter leg times the square root of 3. So now if I take that triangle, go back here, I'll draw the same orientation as our 45. This is 60, this is 30, this is going to be B, 2B, and B times the square root of 3. Now, how do these things look in, t in the unit circle? This is, the, this is now going to look a little tricky, but it seems to help some students. Okay, let's again look at the isosceles triangle again. This is A, this is A, and A times the square root of 2. In the unit circle, the reason why it's called the unit circle is that it has a radius of 1. So I want this number to be equal to 1. How do I do that? Well, couldn't I divide it by a times the square root of 2? If I take a times the square root of 2 and divide it by a times the square root of 2, would that equal 1? Unfortunately, I can't just do that to this length. I have to do it to every single value the lengths that is, because they're linked together. If I just divided this by a times the square root of 2, it would become 1, and our triangle would collapse. So to make sure that it's still a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, I need to divide all three sides by a times the square root of 2. 
then this becomes one. So watch how this transforms. It's gonna be a little bit of radical simplification here. So that's now one. This is, this becomes one. So I end up having one over the square root of two. And this becomes one. So I have one over the square root of two. But as you know, I can't leave that square root of two on, in, the, in the denominator. So to simplify this radical, I would multiply it times the value of one in the form of radical two over radical two. This becomes square root of two, and this becomes square root of four, which is, in fact, two. So this is really equivalent, not really equivalent, it is equivalent, to a length of radical two over two, or square root of two over two. It's isosceles, so this is also, and we would do this, we could do the same process. Hopefully you know it would be the same. And so our right isosceles triangle has these measures when its hypotenuse has a length of one. If we do the same process with this guy, 30, 60, 90, then we get more directly, we get one, we get the square root of three over two, and we get one half. So again, that transformation looks like this. One unit circle, one half the shorter leg, and the longer leg is the square root of three over two. Now, I've also had students mix these up, and that's just wrong. How can we make sure that we understand? Well, fundamental things. Instead of just memorizing where they go, that is often a, a formula for layer mistakes because you don't remember. It's too much stuff to remember. But if we understand, we're in a better position to replicate and, and uh, do it later on. Again, the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. The longest side is opposite the largest measure angle. That's the 90 and the hypotenuse, so we're not worried about that. So the shortest angle, the shortest angle, the smallest least, or least measure angle is opposite the shortest side. And the middle side is opposite the middle measured angle because the 90 is the, the greatest measure. How do we know that this number, because some folks can't see how that number is greater than that? Well, take square root of 3 and put it into your calculator. You should get 1.73 blah, 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 blah. If I take 1.73 and divide it by 2, don't I get 0.86 blah, 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 blah? Well, what is 1 half represented as a decimal? 0.5? Isn't this number greater than this? So I'm, I'm going kind of quickly because I've done it 47 times now in the last week getting ready for midterms. So that is, a to, for me, to try to express to you, that's a way to understand really what's going on here so it's not a matter of memorizing. Can it be? I suppose. So that's where these numbers come from. They're just not magic. They come from math. So the length of this side is the square root of 3 over 2 because it is opposite the 60 degree angle. And this least measure angle is opposite the shortest side and so its measure is 1 half. And if I had a 45 degree reference angle in here, like that one, the length of this side is 1 because it is the hypotenuse. This would be the square root of 2 over 2. And please take note that it is negative because it's in the negative y direction. And this has the square root of 2 over 2. And of course, since it's in the negative x direction, it is also negative in this case. Okay? Hopefully that helps.